So we went on our first Virgin Voyages cruise, specifically the Valiant Lady out of San Juan, Puerto Rico to the Southern Caribbean. And I'm gonna talk to you about what was our experience, what did we like, what did we not like, and would we do it again? So as I said, we did fly into San Juan, Puerto Rico, and we did spend a couple days there. So if you're interested in looking at that video, we do have where we stayed there and our experience there. And so what was it like at the port for San Juan specifically? So it was about a 10 minute uh, taxi ride from our hotel. We stayed at the Marriott Stellaris Casino Resort and it took about 10 minutes to get to the port. It was really, really easy. Uh, there was a luggage clear signage that says luggage drop off. You are not allowed to go into the actual port itself until around 1.30. And we knew that ahead of time. We got there about noon, maybe about noon, I would say. So we had about an hour and a half. The, like I said, the process to drop off the luggage was very, very easy and convenient. We dropped it off. And I believe you can drop it off as early as 9 a.m. in some ports. So take a look at that if that's important to you, if you want to do some touring um, through San Juan or other ports that they're at. We went to a, we had some lunch. We went to a restaurant that I would not recommend in San Juan that was called Marino's Sport Bar and Grill. Frankly, the food was not very good. All the other restaurants was pretty packed. This one we were able to get in right away and maybe there was a reason for that, um, but it was cool and we got food, it was fine. But I would say I would not recommend that restaurant. When we went back to the port at 1.15 and we did have the Splash of Romance package, um, so we were allowed to get priority embarkation. And even with that, uh, we waited in line. Uh, they had chairs to sit on for the rock stars, which are the suites and the splash of romance package inside a air conditioned or at least a cooled building. Um, it was about 92 degrees outside at the time. And so everyone else that did not have those packages had to wait outside in the heat. Uh, once we were inside, we waited in the chairs. It took, they started boarding people about 1.45. So we waited, like I said, we got there about 1.15. We were allowed through a special line, waited in the chair. So maybe 20 to 30 minutes, but they did start the process at 1.45 for rock stars and Splash of Romance. That's where you actually go through the check-in process where you receive your bracelets. And in our case, you get a bracelet that is kind of your, I don't know, key to the ship, so to speak. Um, it gets you into your room. It's where you charge your um, any expenses you may have. It's where you might use your sailor loot if you got free onboard credit um, or your bar tab. And that was really convenient. I will say it did fall off of me once and it did break once. Very easy to do. Um, I was able to go to Sailor Services, which is our customer service area, and they were able to replace it. It was no big deal. Um, now, my husband's didn't move at all. He didn't have any issues. So I would say it probably just depends on um, the bracelet, and they are waterproof, so keep that in mind as well. After you receive your bracelets, and we got a splash of romance bracelet, we also got the deep blue extras bracelet besides the bracelet to get in the room. So a lot of bracelets, I really wasn't a fan of that. Um, but that's their process and that's fine. Um, but Deep Blue Extras is what they give for like their loyalty status. And at the time that we did the sailing, they did a loyalty status match. So we had some loyalty status with Disney and with Royal Caribbean. So we got some of those extras. And we'll talk about that later in the um, film as well, later in the video about what did that get for extras. Then you go through the security screening and we had already dropped off our checked bag, but we had our carry on bag. So similar to what you would experience at an airport, you go through a screening process and then you get to board the ship and we boarded at exactly 213. So it took roughly, you know, 25 to 30 minutes from the time they started boarding to actually get on the ship. Um, which wasn't bad. It really went reasonably smooth considering the line looked a little long. Now, again, remember, we had priority embarkation and there were others that were waiting outside um, that were getting screened after Rock Stars and Splash of Mountain. Splash of, uh, Splash of Romance, excuse me. Let me know below, have you done Splash of Romance and do you think it's worth it? And we'll talk a little bit more about what you get with that. So there are no photographers waiting to take your picture like there are on other cruise lines. Uh, you just walk onto the ship and they have their happenings cast, which is their term that they use for kind of their entertainment cast, 
singing and dancing and greeting you that way, and that was great. I will say, though, when you walk on the ship, in our opinion, it was a little underwhelming. Um, you know, when you walk on other ships, you kind of walk into like a beautiful, you know, promenade or a beautiful kind of main area attraction or lobby. That was not Virgin Voyages. It's pretty much more low key. You actually enter on what they call the roundabout, which is basically like a, a grand staircase area. So that part, in our opinion, was a little underwhelming. When you get on, um, you are able to go right to your room with your bracelet. So one of the advantages of having a later check-in um, than what other cruise lines have is your room is ready. Now, our luggage was not there yet, even though we dropped that off earlier at noon, it was not there yet. But we were able to take our bracelet, get on um, the elevators, which are all red, by the way, which is our themed colors, go right to our room and go into the room. Um, so that part was nice. Pro tip though, you absolutely have to make your show and fitness class reservations right away once you're on the Wi-Fi. So once you are checked in and, and you have your bracelet and you're on the Virgin Voyages Wi-Fi, stop kind of whatever you're doing. And I would recommend not even do your mustard drill this. And normally I would not recommend that. Um, and do your reservations. Now, we already had our dining reservations booked, um, so we didn't worry about that. We had that already done. If you haven't done that, though, do that first, even before the class ones. If you need to go to Sailor Services, do that, um, because those book out even faster, but you can do that ahead of time. Assuming you have your dining reservations, the next thing that I would recommend is do your show reservations and then your fitness class reservations, if that's what's important to you. If the fitness classes are more important, then do those first. So whichever one is most important, do that first because they do book out right away. I will say, again, we were on board by 2.13 and before we even got on the elevator to go up, I was already looking, trying to book the classes. I booked the Richard Simmons, like 1980s um, class, which was probably my most important one that I felt. And I was able to get the time slot that I wanted, which was a morning time slot. I went to the bungee class which was my second priority one that I wanted to get in. And that was already booked out on the C-Day morning sessions. There were some afternoon sessions available, but the morning session was already booked out, which is what I wanted. Um, so key tip, make sure you book. We were able to get all of our reservations for the shows that we wanted, um, but definitely things book out. So please make sure you're doing that. And we'll come back to more of the fitness stuff as we move forward. So we had the Sea Terrace room, which is the a standard balcony room in other ships. Um, again, you use your bracelet to enter the room and charge things. Um, we wanted to watch the mustard drill then once we got our reservations done. And we were looking, it had it on the TV, like a, a like the beginning of the video, like it was a screenshot of it. And we were trying to figure out how do we get that to play? You need to go to your iPad to get it to play. So even though you watch it on your TV screen, your TV is controlled by the iPad in the room. So make sure you know that. So start with your iPad, watch your video. It was kind of a fun, more modern day Virgin Voyages twist is what they would call it, mustard drill. So it was entertaining and it was fine. Um, you still then need to go check in at your location, which is on your, you'll see where you need to go, and then they'll scan you up. Very smooth, easy process, wonderful. As a matter of fact, Disney, if you're still doing, when you're still doing it in person, you could take a note or two from this because it just makes the process so much better. The bathroom was small. So I will say our first impression was like, whoa, this seems really small compared to any other bathroom we've been on on a cruise ship. And the shower in particular, the door, like you kind of had to maneuver with the door. Overall though, I will say that was our first impression. Overall though, it ended up being fine for us for the week. Like it, it had more space in it once you got going than what it felt like initially. It does have a rain, uh, shower type shower head. So if you're a taller person, you won't have to like duck down like you do in some others. And then it also had a regular handheld wand as well, which was really nice. Um, so I will say the shower door and shower could be a little bit bigger, but it was adequate. It fit all our bathroom products. Um, we didn't have any issues. It did have hair shampoo, conditioner, and body wash of their branded products already provided. So you don't need to bring that if you don't want to. Um, it does have your standard safe um, drawers, closet, um, and 
pro tip, use your pass, use your safe, keep your passport in. Um, and then we kept our extra cash in there as well. So it did have all that standard. There was a laundry bag in the closet. And pro tip, with deep blue extras, you actually got a free laundry bag. And the bag is bigger than other cruise lines. You can stuff a lot of clothes in the Virgin Voyages laundry bag. Um, so that was really nice. So we were able to do our laundry like two days before we got off the ship and had fresh, clean laundry clothes on the way back. So pro tip, bigger laundry bags, so you can get more stuffed into it if it's priced per bag. It had a king-sized bed that can be separated, and it's not separated into two like parallel ways that other cruise lines do it. They actually separate it, and it goes into an L-shaped um, formation. So if you choose to have your bed separated, um, just know that, that it's going to go into more of an L shape versus two parallel shaped. There were blackout curtains that were wonderful. Um, again, we talked about the iPad running the TV. The iPad also then changes the lights, so you can dim your lights, you can change the color of your lights if you'd like to. Um, it also is your, you can watch free movies on the iPad. You can do guest services from the iPad, which was also nice. So if you need more towels or washcloths or you want your room cleaned, you can do that from guests from the iPad. And you can also then close and open your curtains that go out to your balcony, to your sea terrace balcony. So the iPad was pretty functional. We didn't have any issues um, once you got the hang of what that was. Um, another thing that was nice is when you walk into the room, I guess it could be nice or nice, depends on your perspective. When you walk into your room and you use your, into your sea terrace room, the blinds and lights automatically open up. So it kind of has that welcoming feel when you first walk in, that's like, oh, it's opening up for you. But then if you do want them closed, you need to go over there and shut them um, to make sure they close. Now this can be a problem if you have somebody still sleeping in the room and you go get coffee. I may or may not have done this. Go get coffee early in the morning and then you walk in and they're still sleeping and it's opening up for you when you walk in because that is automatic. Um, so keep that in mind if you have somebody else who's still sleeping in that area. Um, the Virgin Voyages is very much about going green. So you will not find water bottles um, or um, on this ship. So what they do is they have two carafes of fresh water in your room that they fill um, twice a day at least and they'll fill it up more often if you'd like and so that was really nice honestly you know i i like we like to have water in our room and we felt like we had plenty of water in the room from that and it had a refrigerator and again a balcony um, with two chairs a small table and a hammock and this hammock like i don't know i've been in other hammocks that are not comfortable this hammock is comfortable um, i don't know if it's the angle whatever they did they did it right virgin voyages did it right sitting and swinging in that hammock while looking out in the ocean was awesome pro tip and i will have this linked below bring magnets though to organize your room the the room is a little smaller it felt than other cruise lines that we've stayed on i will say though it was fine um, but magnets still keep the clutter free out of your room. And so you get the clippy ones to hang your paperwork on because you will have some paperwork. And then the hook ones to hang your beach bag, your wet swimsuits, you know, things like that. Um, the bed was not tall enough to store our luggage. So other cruise lines, you know, storing your luggage underneath the bed was a way to keep organized. This bed was not tall enough underneath to do that. If you have the, I guess I'll call it the clamshell kind, you can open it up and slide it in and that would be fine. Um, but we left ours in the closet. And at first I thought we weren't gonna have enough room for our luggage because of that, but it fit just fine. It didn't hinder the door. It didn't hinder closet space. It actually worked beautifully. So like I said, even though it, at first glance, you feel like, oh, are we gonna have enough space? It worked just fine. There were a few drawers in the closet. There was hanging um, hangers provided as well, plenty of hangers provided and some shelving. Um, so that, it really wasn't an issue. We were able to fit all of our clothes, um, unpack our luggage and our luggage all in the closet and have plenty of access space to walk, no problems whatsoever. So let's talk about the pools. Now this is a little controversial. There are only two pool areas on Virgin Voyages and, um, and they're small. They are small compared to other cruise ships. But to be honest, we didn't have any troubles, even on sea days at the most most busy time period, getting a chair um, and getting in, finding a space in the pool. It did not seem as overwhelmingly crowded as it can sometimes, or what I thought it would be as small as it is. 
So if you if a bed near the pool is extremely important to you, yes, you're going to have to get there early. We would get up there about 9, 9.30, and they were already taken. That wasn't a big deal to us. Um, we grabbed another chair, and honestly, we were able to get a bed about midday, maybe 1 o'clock in the afternoon, um, when people were leaving to go do other things, and we grabbed a bed. No big deal. Um, if Another pro tip would be if it's a port day, we came back after Fort de France, back to the ship about 11, 1130 because we were done with our stuff that morning and all the beds were available. Um, and there was plenty of sp uh, open seating by the pool. So if the pool is important to you and you really don't want any crowds, go on a port day. That is, and that's a tip for all cruise lines, but you'll get a bed, you'll have plenty of seating, anything you want by the pool. There was an area where um, where the beds were, where there was a DJ in the afternoon, and on your um, app, it will tell you what time the DJs were there. I would say one con is, you know, other cruise lines kind of have it all afternoon for the most part. This one was pretty short. I would say maybe two hours, maybe three hours on occasion um, where the DJ was playing, and we kind of like to have the DJ there more often, um, but it was fine. It was there in the other afternoon, and then the other side of the pool, uh, there was some soft music kind of playing through the speakers, but it wasn't DJ kind of music. The customer service was outstanding. And I would say this through the all the ship. Um, so the customer service was high, high level. When we were in the pool, about every 15 to 20 minutes, you had somebody going around at least asking if you needed a drink. And then you would do your little um, card. Uh, I'm sorry, you would do your bracelet and they'd bring your drink, you know, 15 minutes later. Sometimes it was a little bit of a wait, but it really, the customer service was outstanding. It's really nice because you do not have to tip. We did tip on occasion, but it is not expected. Um, they, It is not often done. So you do not have to tip, which is a great advantage for Virgin Voyages. The hot tubs were really small, two to four people kind of small. There were several around the ships. So you do have to kind of walk around, um, but they were really small. Um, so you may need to walk if you want to have one you know, that has a little more space from a hot tub perspective. So yeah. let's talk food. Food is important. They, Virgin Voyages does not have a buffet. They have what's called the galley, which is like a food court kind of concept. In our opinion, this was somewhat of a con. My husband would feel it's a big con. I felt it was fine. You know, it was similar to a buffet where they had pre- done items that you could just grab and go with. So if you wanted, you know, the yogurts um, and all those things, they would have yogurt parfaits ready to grab and go, oatmeal ready to grab and go, um, scrambled eggs ready to grab and go. So from that concept, it was a little bit like a buffet. And then you could do your made to order omelets and things like that. But the probably the con is the selection just wasn't as great as it was with a buffet. So the taco bar was not open in the evenings. It was only open during lunchtime or to like 2 or 3 p.m. Same thing with the noodle bar. My husband loved the noodle bar and he got that often, but it wasn't open in the evening. If you didn't have dining reservations, you couldn't get tacos in the noodle bar. You could have burgers. You could have 24-hour breakfast, like omelet kind of things, um, but you couldn't get everything that you would want on both meals. Um, it had a great fresh salad bar. You know, again, burgers and things like that. But keep that in mind if that's important to you. Also, you have the option to sit at the table and they will come. You, you lift up your little flag and they will come and ask for your order and bring the order fresh to you. Um, but if you're in a hurry to go to a port, it is busy. Um, I just recommend going to the grab and go. One really positive thing that we loved, though, about the galley is it would have these bento boxes that were in the front that you could grab and go for your day. And the thing that we probably loved the most was they would have this trail mix in a bento box. Um, and so we would grab those and grab a few of those and bring those to with, with us to the port or have it in our room. Because sometimes at night when you're having a drink, having some peanuts and some trail mix and had a little bit of sweet and a big, you know, that mixture was really nice, that kind of salt and sweet when you're having a drink. So we liked having that in our room as well. So we would grab a few of those every morning and have it either in our room for a later snack at night or for port days. So there's a pro tip. Look at what they have in the bento boxes. Um, and some, and oftentimes what they have in the morning, they won't have later in the day. So if there's something that you like, you can't just get trail mix anytime during the day. It gets rotated out and then you can't get it till the next morning. There are soda and water machines. Um, again, no bottles. Um, so you can just grab a glass there and fill up a soda or your water, or you can bring your own um, glass if you want something bigger and use that. 
Uh, so the other um, pro tip is there's two kind of coffee bar areas where you can get your specialties. There is a coffee bar um, by the social club. I can't remember. That's probably not the name of it. But then there was the grounds club two, I think is what it was called. Um, and that's up in the galley where you can get specialty coffee as well. And sometimes those get busy on poor days. They were pretty efficient. Um, but keep in mind, if that's what you want for specialty coffees, you can go there. In the galley, though, they did have drip black coffee that you can just go um, if you want. But there was no to-go cups there. So if you want a to-go cup, you're going to have to go to the grounds club to get that. There was a fresh made to order pizza place, which I thought the pizza was really, really good. Um, so you go and order it. They'll give you a little, you know, uh, notification uh, buzzer and they make it fresh to order. It took maybe seven minutes or so, five to seven minutes. They have a beautiful outside sitting area um, and you could grab that either to go. They'll give you a box or you can eat it there, which we used a few times as well. They had the social club, which we also really enjoyed. This was probably one of our more favorite places to go, honestly. It had the carnival classics of candy, pretzel, popcorn, hot dogs, and shakes, either alcoholic or non-alcoholic shakes. Um, and this is also, though, where they have the game area. Um, so you'll have an arcade, and it's the old school arcades like Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, all free. It had the shuffle boards. It had pool tables. It also has where um, the trivia is and trivia was awesome and it was very well attended um, really really fun they have they really kind of put a virgin twist on it for you um, so we did that quite often and my husband said that he had the hot wings as well and it was really good he went there a couple times to get the hot wings so that was kind of i would call it the sports bar kind of concepts and there were some sports um, on the televisions there, but it definitely was the gaming area. And like I said, kind of those carnival um, kind of food choices that were there. And we, we spent quite a bit of time there when we were on the ship. Uh, the actual sit down restaurants were awesome. So if you haven't heard, you don't pay extra for the specialty restaurants. They just have specialty restaurants as where you make reservations and it's all included in your cruise fare. Pink Agave was the Mexican um, restaurant. Extra Virgin is the Italian restaurant. Um, by the way, the lemon cello at Extra Virgin, I thought was awesome. Like it made me a convert. So I do recommend the lemon cello. Handmade, homemade, handmade pasta. Um, really, really good. Uh, the wake also was our favorite. So the wake and pink agave was our two favorites. And we actually went there twice for each of those. And the wake is like the steakhouse. And it had a seafood platter that was an extra charge. So everything else was included, but there were a few extra charge items in the seafood platter. We did enjoy that on our second one and it was very, very good. Uh, my husband loved the bone marrow. I did not try it. It looked not good to me. He loved it. So I guess if you want to try that, you know, why not? It's all included. You can order many, many things if you want. This would be the time to experiment and try. Um, the filet mignon was awesome. We both ordered that both times besides the seafood. So we really liked that. And the lemon cheesecake. Oh my goodness. It was so so good. I gave the lemon cheesecake I, a 10 out of 10. It was that good. Um, so I would say the wake was probably our ultimate favorite with the pink agave coming in as a close second, particularly the guacamole and homemade chips at pink agave was really good. If you found this helpful at all, please give me a like and subscribe. It really helps move my channel forward. And stay tuned for part two, where I go more into the entertainment, the fitness classes, what did I like, what did I not like um, about Virgin Voyages with that.